Well, President Donald Trump has been indicted for a third time. And just like in the movies, the third one promises to be the best. Officials announced Tuesday that Trump has been indicted in relation to his alleged involvement in January 6th and his alleged attempt to interfere in the 2020 election. Yeah, it would have been a real shame if someone would have interfered with the 2020 election. My theory is that Biden got even more votes and Trump has been hiding them at Mar-a-Lago. I always thought 81 million seemed low. I'm not going to go through all the charges, but one of them stands out. Of the three charges, one was related to a civil rights law, a conspiracy against the right to vote and to have one's vote counted. It's almost like civil rights law has become a rival constitution. Not sure why this book is on my desk. It's the same statute that Ricky Vaughn was charged under. And if you don't remember, Ricky Vaughn was an anonymous Twitter account that posted a meme telling Democrats how to vote by tweet. It was a joke, and he was convicted, and faces up to 10 years in prison. A lot of people haven't even heard that story, but don't worry, when we win, we'll make it into a biopic. But there's one charge that's missing here. For two years, we've been told that Trump incited an insurrection, and there is one federal statute that criminalizes inciting any rebellion or insurrection. But Trump wasn't charged under it. Trump said the election was rigged. Everyone knows it. It's protected under the First Amendment like any other opinion. But he's in trouble because his opinions interfered with people's civil rights. I sure hope none of my opinions interfere with civil rights. But it's not just that. Trump isn't being indicted for just saying the election was rigged. He's being indicted for saying it was rigged, but secretly not believing it, making knowingly false statements to keep people's votes from being counted. So they have to prove that what he actually thought was that the election was above board, that he thought the election was transparent, nothing under the table, no irregularities at all. Of course, I think that's true because I'm a good American citizen, and I agree 100% with the U.S. government and all of YouTube's policies. But the question is, does Trump? So yes, their entire case depends on reading Trump's mind. And what evidence do they have that he didn't believe what he said? Well, as Michael Tracy said on Twitter, among the evidence cited for the comical allegation that Trump knew his claims were false is that Mike Pence told him he had personally seen no evidence of outcome determinative fraud. And Trump was like, everyone stop the presses. Pence says I lost. So if we're going to have a trial about Trump's beliefs, is Trump then going to be able to give evidence that made him think the election was rigged? Are we going to see the first litigation of the 2020 election? Well, that will depend on what the judge will allow. So who's the judge? Judge Tanya Chutkin is an immigrant from Jamaica and was appointed by Barack Obama. Not exactly the type to wear a Blacks for Trump shirt. And the trial will be held in D.C., so the jury will be 11 Ray Epses and a Dominion voting machine. It's possible that Trump could appeal the case, and it could go all the way up to the Supreme Court, which would be the next step in the apotheosis of Clarence Thomas. And then there's the issue of timing. Trump's indictment came the day after one of Hunter Biden's former co-workers testified that Biden had done favors for the Ukrainian company Hunter worked for, and that Biden had been on 20 calls with Hunter's business partners. I feel sorry for Hunter's business partners. Can you imagine having a speakerphone conversation with Joe Biden? You may also remember that Trump's previous indictment came the day after the FBI released documents alleging that Biden took a $10 million bribe from the same Ukrainian company. How much money would you like, Mr. Vice President? Somewhere between $700 billion and a trillion, $300 million billion. And how are conservatives responding? Presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy filed a lawsuit against the Department of Justice. It's the politically obvious move, which is why none of these guys are doing it. The Twitter account RNC Research assembled a montage of 24 minutes of Democrats denying election results. They're indicting a former president. Quick, call the montage team. And then there's another presidential candidate, Mike Pence. He said, Today's indictment serves as an important reminder anyone who puts himself over the Constitution should never be president of the United States. Huh. So Trump gets charged with violating a civil rights law, and Mike Pence says Trump was putting himself over the Constitution. Who keeps doing that? So the conservative response has been mixed, but the left still has their work cut out for them. Not only do they have to make Trump look like a criminal for having an opinion, they also have to make Joe Biden look cool. The day of Trump's arraignment, Joe Biden's Twitter account posted this. I like my coffee dark. I wonder how many takes they did. I like coffee. God. I like my coffee like I like my pool boys. Dark. God. The CIA killed JFK. Cut. So yeah, weird flex. But that's not all they're doing to try to prop up Biden. Biden's allies have been spreading Photoshop pictures to make him look younger. Here's one tweet. And here's another. And here's the image from the tweet next to the original Getty image version. Say what you will about the right, but at least our Photoshops are more realistic. And then there's this tweet by Zoomer influencer Harry Sisson. 
Backwards hat, aviators, and relaxation. Joe Biden is pretty cool. Reminds me of that famous tweet from Queen Anksu Namun. Backwards hat, aviators, and relaxation. Imhotep is pretty cool. So we'll have to see where all this goes. They've already undermined people's trust in elections, and now they're punishing any criticism. This goes to show that we can't go back to Mitt Romney Republicanism. The dismantling is going to have to go way further than that. We've got to start questioning things that both Republicans and Democrats hold dear. Things like... Again with the book. This week, I also interviewed Blaze TV host and one of my favorite tweeters, Oren McIntyre. The title of the interview is The Left's Tower of Babel, and I think you're really going to like it. You can watch it now for free on Canon Plus, and if there's enough of an outcry, I might put it on YouTube as well. For now, the Canon Plus link is in the description. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next week.